Hello everyone, this is Matt Hoots here, and I've got Sean with me with Mitsubishi. Now, one of our friends was asking me, he's like, you know what, I've got a Mitsubishi unit and it never works. And I'm like, that's impossible, it's an amazing unit, 12 year warranty, and why doesn't it work? And she says, it's buried in the snow, and I'm like, why do you have it buried in the snow? So Sean's going to give us some tips and details about, first of all, like where to install your units when you have uh, cold weather. And also, let's debunk the myth that these units do not work in cold weather climates. Thanks for the opportunity, Matt. Yes, first off, cold climate heat pumps do the job in cold climates. That's what they're designed for. You don't want to use a standard heat pump in a cold climate. You are going to see those limitations on temperatures, on capacity, on defrost, etc. So we'll just take that one and set it aside. They work. I've got systems operating in Colorado at negative 22 just this past week. Contractor, installer, sent me a picture. Negative 22 in the morning, and uh, the house was 69 degrees, nice and, nice and cozy, comfy, just sitting at 69 degrees, at, which was the set point. I've got a system at 11,300 feet elevation at Snowmass Ski Area, and it's doing primary heat for the ski patrol hut there and it's a test case condition but uh, Aspen Ski Company came to us and said hey we're thinking about doing this do you think it'll work I think it'll work let's try it out it's been doing a great job it's, but you have to be conscientious about setting it up for success and you have there's a little bit of maintenance when it comes to the amount of snow and ice and these kinds of things we mounted that system five feet up to give it lots of it space below for the snow and the ice to happen so we have these ones over here these ones are on the ground oh yeah but then you have a bracket that you stick on the building, or do you have a separate cage yep. to, to basically elevate it? Yeah, absolutely. So raising it up so that the snow level doesn't get up to it. More importantly, probably, is that you want to make sure that the ice in the defrost cycle, in the defrost cycle, there's water that's generated, the, the snow and the ice that's melting off. That has to leave the unit and wash away, run away, whether it be into the ground below or some other kind of space that's not going to be of danger to people walking by, etc. And, and once that's lifted up, it can go into defrost and it can do its thing and get that uh, excess water away. You also want to make sure that you're uh, not locating the unit under a spot where the snow is going to slide off the roof or under the drip line of the roof line so that it's building up ice on top of it and these kinds of things or snow sliding on top of it. So there's a number of these items that are talked about. We have a cold climate installation guideline that talks about all of these features. So where can people find details on exactly how to do this? Yeah, so um, our website, primary website for consumers is MitsubishiComfort.com. You can see uh, various different uh, um, features and benefits of the of the products themselves, and pick and choose which one, which kind of thing you're looking at. On a more technical side, we have another website called MyLinkDrive.com. Under MyLinkDrive.com, you can look at the model number or the type of unit you you are think, considering or you that you have, and you can drill down into that website and find technical documents. And within there, you'll find a, uh, a cold climate guidelines as well and that's a one-page PDF that you can download um, or just frankly follow the instructions on a cold climate piece of equipment which really relates to the outdoor unit the hyperheat or cold climate equipment it relates to our outdoor units the indoor units uh, can go on both a standard heat pump in cold or hot climates and it doesn't really matter what it's connected to. Thanks Sean for all that great information. Now Mitsubishi is one of the partners on the 1920s makeover ATL. This is in Atlanta so we don't have to worry about snow or if we have enough snow we're looking at a one inch so we don't have to worry about bringing it off the ground but what's really be really nice about this is this is built in a the neighborhood that's really close to downtown. I went to the showcase house, the renovation house the at the IBS 2022, and I noticed lots of thunder. Um, I heard raindrops. I heard planes going overhead. These units were blowing full bore. I saw plants blowing, so I knew, like just moving around around it. I couldn't hear the condensers. The neighbors, I'm sure, love it because it looks like it's right on the setback, and that's the, that's the condition we're going to have at the 1920s house. These are very quiet units, but you do need to let them breathe. By letting them breathe, don't pile leaves on them, don't pile snow on them, let them do their job because it's taking heat from the inside uh, to the outside during the summertime and, you know, vice versa in the wintertime. Yep. Thanks again, Sean. Absolutely. Take care.